Hello guys and welcome to the first instalment of this partnership video uh, for the PlayStation 4 SSD upgrade alongside OCZ there. Now this video is the first video in a series I'm going to be creating on the backup process. Now I'm well aware there's videos already on the internet and absolutely fine. This is a video I've been wanting to cover for absolutely ages um, but unfortunately due to loads of different commitments I've just never got round to doing it. So I'm going to do it now uh, and this is kind of aimed at people who are maybe not as tech savvy or are tech savvy and just want to double check the options available to you so I'm going to cover all of those options for you and go through it. Now the video we're shooting today is the before process before popping in that solid state drive because there is two options you need to consider when you are popping in a new SSD or indeed if you are staying with your mechanical hard drive the if you go in for like a Samsung 2TB hard drive, for example, and then what you need to consider is the options. So you can either go for a fresh installation where you pop your new hard drive in and acquire the operating system for the PlayStation 4 directly from Sony's website, or you can indeed go for the backup and restore process. And as the name entails, that is one of the better options because you don't have to go for all the the hassle of re-downloading all that new that data you don't have to worry about all your saved game data all your trophy pictures all your videos your captures none of that all you have to worry about um, but instead you can just simply pop your SSD in you go for the installations normally you still have to get the operating system from Sony uh, but then you can restore your data just like it was before you made the upgrade so a lot of people are more comfortable with that option and we're going to be showing you that today so all you got to do is fire your playstation up as normal uh, now i haven't got this solid state drive currently it is on its way through the post but this is the housekeeping part and the kind of what you need to do before you do the upgrade and restore process so there is a couple of things we're going to need to do so if we go into the playstation 4 interface itself we need to go into the settings portal. Now, if we go over to the settings, it is the last but one option on the PlayStation 4, which is your system. Now this is kind of your higher end settings. Uh, and what we need to do just, again, last but one, is backup and restore. Now, what you need to do to get this, you are obviously going to need some kind of external media. Uh, with enough storage to copy over the data that you have on there. Now, with typically, uh, if you are upgrading, you're going to have the base model PlayStation 4, which did come with a 500 GB hard drive. Now, you're going to need one with the equivalent size or more. Uh, so, I've got a 2 terabyte external Western digital hard drive, which I've plugged in, which again is going to be more than enough uh, to you know to allow for a backup here so uh obviously there are options underneath transfer data to another trait ps4 that is another option you have but that would be if you've got like you've just upgraded to the playstation 4 pro uh, you can use an ethernet cable uh to do that so that's not the option we want we want the backup and restore process because we're keeping the existing playstation 4 we're just giving it a bit of an upgrade so if we go into backup and restore it's then broken down into three different options now the top one is back up the playstation 4 gives you a bit of a summary if you're not sure what it is but it backs up all the applications and data to usb storage so what that is going to consist of is all your games so all your game data so the game files needed to run that game or your save data so all your saves on your game it copies over and all of your captured image and video using the inbuilt recording capability that the PlayStation 4 has. So that's really cool. You can chop and change what you'd like to back up. We'll cover that in just a second. Second option down is to restore the PS4. So when we do get the solid state drive in and we do go through that upgrade process, we are still going to have to acquire that PS4 operating system because the solid state drive is going to be brand new with no data on it. And we still need to you know, initiate the operating system. We still need to go through that setting up process. And then once we're into the PlayStation 4, we would come back into this menu exactly where we are. And we would then obviously hit that restore PS4. 
Now, I will show you this because I've already made a backup of this PS4 yesterday, uh, just because it takes a very long time, which we'll talk about in just a second. So if I go to restore PS4, it'll quickly read your hard drive and how many, you know, if you've got different incremental backups on there, uh, then it's going to show all your different backups. Now, I've just done the one. Uh, obviously, the, the default title it will give you is the date that you've done it. So it's in backwards order. So we can see that it was done on the 30th of the 1st, 2017. And it was started at 5 past 8. Um, you can see on the far right hand side, it does give us an indication of the size. So 536.3 GB. Now, that's one backup. I do backup my hard drives anyway to my NAS. Just in case my PS4 hard drive was to go down, I'm not going to have too many issues. Now, uh, at the moment, because I'm only getting a 480 GB SSD, I won't be able to restore that particular backup. I will have to make changes to do that. Now, because it's just a review SSD, I'm not going to go through my system now and delete games. I don't want to bring that reduce, you know, that backup size down. Uh, we're going to go down and we're going to back up certain games and certain games we're going to cover in this particular series which we'll cover in another video those will be the only games which I will keep on this PS4 then back up because then it will be a reasonable size so if I was to press X now uh, it's going to ask me your PS4 will restore with these backup data you have selected and it will go away and format the drive and start again but obviously I don't want to do that so that's fine uh, and the next one down is delete backup data. So again, if you've got one drive that you use like for your house, for example, and you've got multiple PS4s, and you want to do a backup, and unfortunately there's not enough room, you can then go in, see the different backups, make the selection, and you can then delete that from the hard drive itself. So that's the other option. So for the time, we're going to go for backup PlayStation 4. Now, what we'll do is go into it, and it's going to have a quick think. So at the top right hand corner, you can see the symbols. That means it's calculating, and it's going to tell us basically what hard, what my hard drive is filled at, and what where the data is coming from in different sections. So there we go. Fairly quickly tells us that I've got nearly 18 GB of captures. So that's going to be stuff like videos, you, you know, recorded with a built-in game recorder, and also all the pictures. So images that you can snap on anything, any game, but also every time you acquire a trophy, it obviously takes a snap as default now. Uh, I've got save data, so that's going to be all my saved game data and stuff like that, which comes to 1.36 GB. And then we've got our settings, which comes at a very small 15 megabytes. Now, that's going to be settings on the PS4 itself. So that'll be stuff like your themes, what theme you have on your PS4 and all your different settings that you've chosen to have. Now, as you can see, I can unselect applications if I wanted to, because you can either back up all your data, or you can just go for the top three, because all of your applications will get reinstalled anyway. So if you've downloaded games like myself from the PlayStation Network, then all you need to do is once you log back in, you can go into past purchases and you can start that download. Now, obviously, it's going to rely on your your internet. Luckily, I have quite decent speed, so it wouldn't be too bad. Or, when you pop your disc in, so if you still use disc-based games, obviously, the first couple of minutes, it will copy certain data over to the hard drive for speed, but then the rest of the game itself is streamed straight from the disc, so that's not too bad. But the majority of my games are purchased via the PSN uh, portal, so that's why I've got probably a, quite a lot of applications. So, we're going to go next, just to show you the interface, because this won't be the, the backup which I'm going to do. Uh, we will chop and change what I need to back up. So we're going to hit next. It, it tells me the PS4 will restart, and the items you have selected will be backed up onto USB storage. And you can see the name there by default, you can see the size there. And you can put a description as well if you want. So if you want a nice, you know, if you want a filing system that you understand and you're happy with, you can change that in the description, no problem at all. But the default name will always stay the same. Because it's going to tell you when you when you did it and what date. So we're going to hit the backup now. It's going to do a quick preparing the backup, uh, and this recording will pause temporarily 
because the PS4 will switch off and go into like a background mode, which cuts off all your games, and that's when we'll reconvene and we'll give you the last bit of the process. Okay, so we're now coming back online, uh, and like I said, it won't give you a, a normal interface you've seen before, it will just go straight into the back and gut process now and, and start initiating. Now, for the first couple of minutes, it's kind of just initiating in the background, it won't show you a progress bar straight away. Now, there is a couple of things you need to know before you do this. Obviously, the media you use needs to be bigger than the one you're backing up or the same size, uh, and two, the hard drive you decide to use may need to be formatted into a format the PlayStation 4 can read. So an example of that be, I am an Apple Mac user in our house, so obviously when I plug in hard drives, it will format to a readable format for Apple system, which is OSX journaled. Now PS4 obviously doesn't use that, it is based on a Linux system, but will only read XFAT, and FAT32, those are the only formats it will read. So I recommend using XFAT, uh, that's what I formatted it in, and now it will read my hard drive. Because at first, if it won't read your hard drive, if it just comes up no USB selected, or no USB input, uh, that is the most likely the reason is because it's not the correct format. So there we go guys, the process has initiated. And as you can see from the time estimations, it's going to be a while. Now, one thing I will say about the time, it's all estimated. Uh, obviously, the times will chop and change all the time depending on what it's copying over. Uh, obviously, as soon as it hits the capture images, it's going to fly through that because they're very small pieces of data compared to video files, which are, you know, 1 gig, 2 gig, etc. Now, the only downside to the original PS4 is unfortunately the two front USBs on there are only USB 2 so we're not going to utilize the USB 3 capability that my hard drive has so it is going to take a while the backup I did yesterday I left overnight once it's done it will automatically pop itself into rest mode uh, and once you turn it on it will just basically let you know the backup's complete and it will restart back to normal PS4 and that is then when we will start the process of removing the old hard drive and popping in the new one. So, guys, this has been the backup process. Uh, I'm going to cancel this now because I've actually already done the backup for myself. Uh, but this is what you need to do, guys, if you want to do the backup process. Uh, obviously, in this video series, we're going to be covering the benefits of both systems. So don't worry. As I say, we're going to be covering both the traditional method. So as I say guys, we're going to be talking about both methods via fresh install versus the backup and restore processes we're going to be seeing basically if there is any uplift in performance if you go for the fresh installation now the only thing that why i say that is a relate to a, an old uh upgrade i did before but this was on a windows based system when i used a cloning image i noticed when i used uh, an ssd back in the day it wasn't as quick as a fresh install so it's going to be interesting if that issue happens across kind of all systems but if not, that's fine. So, guys, this has been the look at the backing up and restore process. Obviously, once we get the solid state drive in from OCZ, we're going to show you the recover, so the restore process. And for the time being, uh, we'll wait for that to appear. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, videos to look forward to, guys, in the next couple of days, weeks, is going to be looking at an OCZ hard drive. More will be revealed when it arrives here. Uh, and obviously the PS4 and then we're going to do some comparisons of games on a traditional spinning hard drive versus a solid state drive and we'll go from there. Thank you very much.